Thanks for checking out the weekly sermon from Church of the Resurrection. We pray that God will use this message to speak to you and help you grow in your faith journey. We'd like to invite you to join us next week at one of our services, whether in live worship online at court.org slash live or in person at one of our locations in the Kansas City area. Church of the Resurrection is one church in multiple locations. To learn more about our service times and ministries, please visit Cora.org. We hope you enjoy this message. As we continue in worship, I want to invite you to hear these words of scripture. Our passage today is from Psalm 40. I put all my hope in the Lord. He leaned down to me. He listened to my cry for help. He lifted me out of the pit of death, out of the mud and filth, and set my feet on solid rock. He steadied my legs. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise for our God. Many people will learn of this and be amazed. They will trust the Lord. Those who put their trust in the Lord, who pay no attention to the proud or to those who follow lies are truly happy. You, Lord, my God, you've done so many things, your wonderful deeds and your plans for us. No one can compare with you. If I were to proclaim and talk about all of them, they would be too numerous to count. You don't relish sacrifices or offerings. You don't require entirely burned offerings or compensation offerings, but you have given me ears. So I said, here I come. I'm inscribed in the written scroll. I want to do your will, my God. Your instruction is deep within me. I've told the good news of your righteousness in the great assembly. I didn't hold anything back, as you well know, Lord. I didn't keep your righteousness only to myself. I declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I didn't hide your loyal love and trustworthiness from the great assembly. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of scripture. Will you join me in prayer as we continue in worship? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your witness. May you uh, anoint me as I bring your word this day. It is in his name we pray, amen. Before I begin, I want to say thank you to Church of the Resurrection for your wonderful, wonderful support to the Great Plains Annual Conference. As you know, we have close to 900 churches in this annual conference, and your funding helps us support local churches for important ministries that they do across Kansas and Nebraska, providing funds for scholarships for seminary students, for innovative ministries for our local churches. We much appreciate that support. Thank you. Some years ago, I came across this poet, Mary Oliver. Many of you are familiar with her work. A a poet who's a Pulitzer Prize winner, wrote more than 20 volumes of poetry spanning six decades. She was one who loved nature and she would write about everything she saw on her daily walks. What she saw was not anything out of the ordinary, but more often it was very simple things such as a stagnant pond or flowers. Sometimes it might be more exciting things such as animals she saw on her journeys. But Mary found beauty in everything she experienced in God's creation, from nature to humanity. She wrote often of the natural world and she intertwined her spirituality in her writing. She would take frequent walks through the woods by the shoreline and she'd write about everything that she saw. Friends would write that she saw the sacred and nature's endless cycle of death and rebirth. She would write of herself later, she said, there's never been a day in my life and my friends would say at a distance, there's Oliver standing in the weeds, scribbling in her notebook. In a book she would write later, she wrote a poem entitled, Sometimes. Later, I was in a field full of sunflowers, she wrote. I was filling the head of midsummer. I was thinking of the sweet electric drowse of creation when it began to break. In the west, clouds gathered, thunderheads. In an hour, the sky was filled with them. In an hour, the sky was filled with the sweetness of rain and the blast of lightning, followed by the deep bells of thunder. Water from the heavens, electricity from the source, both of them mad to create something, the lightning brighter than any flower, the thunder without a drowsy bone in its body. And then she wrote, instructions for living a life. Pay attention, be astonished, and tell about it. When I first found this poem, I knew that someday I would be using this poem in a sermon. Although Mary talks about these instructions for 
living a life, they run parallel with the Bible. Her words stretch the imagination by reminding us to always be looking for God's uh, beautiful creation. Either way, there are beautiful words for us to live by our everyday lives. The psalmist does much of what Mary tells us to do in this reading for today. Many know that the psalms are also considered poetry. The writers writing about the wonderful world that God created, but also wrestling with God's involvement with humanity. The psalmist is dealing with much, but he refers back to God because he has faith and trust in God. And here are these words. You have multiplied, O Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. I want to use my time today to talk about this instruction for Mary to pay attention, to be astonished, and to tell about it. I appreciate the sermon series, What the Tech, that I learned from uh, Reverend Hamilton. One piece that I can certainly affirm is that technology can easily take us away from paying attention. Our use of technology takes us away from our connection with each other as human beings and from our world, and it prevents us from not appreciating what's around us. And it also keeps us from developing relationships with other people. I've not been as faithful to do this, but due to the cold weather, but when the weather warms, I enjoy being outside to run a walk and just enjoy God's creation. I don't use headphones. I never take my phone with me. I enjoy hearing and seeing what's around me. And whether it's walking the running trail downtown Topeka, I enjoy it. There is so much going on on that running trail that I have used along the Oklahoma River in Oklahoma City when I lived there. My former office was on the other side, so I would change and stop, stop and run up the river, hang out, walk, and the rest, and then I would head home. As I ran the tra trail, I watched the geese along the trail. And at times when they have new babies, they like to sit on the running trail. And they sat there daring anyone, including myself, to come close to the babies, which I never did. I would look and see the rowers on the river. I would hear the laughter. I would hear the instructions that they were given. I not only got to enjoy exercise, but I paid attention to the environment around me. It inspired me, and often I would do as Mary and just marvel at God's creation. I would be out there several times a week and would see the usual folks in the area. And I noticed one person out there, whether it was cold or hot, he was always bundled up as he walked the trail. We would give each other our usual greetings and we'd both move on about our business. But one day he, he and I stopped to visit at the start of the trail. And I found out his name was Carmelo. He was from Mexico. He asked where I was from and I said, I'm from Oklahoma City and I was indigenous. We began to talk and then we would walk the trail together about three miles and just talk about life. He would tell me about his family in Mexico and how much he missed his mother. He talked about the importance of family within its culture. We talked about food, sometimes about the political structures in each country. He was very proud of who he was and where he came from. He would ask me how to say or use certain words in English, and I would do the same asking for Spanish translations of English. We talked about our countries, about events in the world, and sometimes just today. We learned so much from each other, enjoyed our conversations, and any time we would run, we would always look for each other along that trail. I so appreciated him, was so thankful that I did pay attention to what was around me, that I took an opportunity that day to visit, to learn, and to create this friendship with Carmelo. The opportunity to meet a new friend and to embrace cultures that we have as God's people is priceless. Those opportunities don't happen when we don't pay attention to the world around us and to people that God often places in our past. But beneath the color of our skin, we're all alike. We all experience love and pain. We all have hopes and dreams. We all experience the same emotions as human beings. It's just that we look different. Sometimes we come from different backgrounds. And that was certainly the case with Carmelo. But the bottom line, my sisters and brothers, is that we we're all created in the image of God. God created all and said, it is good. Can you imagine what we're missing out on in our lives when we don't pay attention to what's around us, when we don't pay attention to God's ordered world and we don't pay attention to humanity? Mary Oliver reminds us in her poem, to be astonished, to be astonished. There are many scriptures that refer to folks being astonished by 
the work of the Lord. Matthew 8 reads, but the men were astonished saying, who is this that even the winds and the water obey him? Second, they were on the road going up to Jerusalem and Jesus was walking ahead of them and they were astonished. But those who followed him were afraid. Taking the 12 aside again, he began to tell them the things that would happen to them. And lastly, as they went into the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, sitting on the right side, and they were utterly astonished. My friends, the days of being astonished by God is certainly not limited to the New Testament. There are countless stories in the Hebrew Bible, in the New Testament, people being astonished by the work of God. God did not stop intervening with the world when the Bible ended, but rather it happens every single day of our lives. But many of us often many times in one day, and sometimes we see it and sometimes we do not. We are blessed and we're able to pay attention to God's work in the world and to be astonished by what we see and what we witness. Writer Ruth Franklin summarizes the life of the poet, Mary Oliver, she writes, the way she writes these poems, they feel like prayers. She channels the voice of somebody who it seems might possibly have access to God. I think the word does give a sense of someone who's in tune with the deepest mysteries of the universe, she writes. I'm aware that the psalmist and Mary both were astonished by God's creation. Both find value and beauty in everything they see from the smallest to the largest. And both are so astonished that they have to write about it and tell it with the hopes that people will hear and read these beautiful texts. Can you think about the times when you have been astonished by God lately? Can you recall the last time you had an encounter with God and it moved you so much that you stopped and you had to sit there and think about that particular experience and what it meant for your life? Some time ago, I was visiting with a young man I knew in Oklahoma City and we would talk about all sorts of things and he would travel to other places for tournaments. And we came home and began talking about where he had been. And he told me he had just returned home from Lawrence, Kansas on a tournament. And he said, when I was driving up, David, he said, there's a spot between Wichita and Topeka that has an overlook. And as I was driving, it was late at night and there were millions of stars in the sky. He said, so I pulled over at the overlook. I parked my truck. I laid down the tailgate and I laid in the back of my truck watching the millions and millions of stars. And he said, as I looked at those stars for over an hour, I thought to myself, how small am I? How small am I in God's world? And he told that story with excitement every single time we talked about that encounter. His chance encounter with God and God's created world brought life to him. And it helped him to think about what his place was in this world. Lastly, Mary reminds us that perhaps for the Christian community, it's the most important she writes, tell about it, to tell about it. The psalmist writes, I've told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. For see, I've, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of, of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. I've been on the job as bishop for almost two months now. My greatest joy is, is to get a chance to stop and visit with people, laying clergy about the lives, about the churches, the ministries, what's going on in the community and what they are doing uh, for the sake of the gospel. It's been fun to witness this throughout the annual conference as I've traveled places even in the last uh, two weeks. And there's so much great ministry I've learned going on, not just here at Church of the Resurrection, but in our churches of all sizes across the Great Plains annual conference. One of the most exciting stories is that of the recent work of our board at Day Ministry. This is a body that prepares people feeling called by God to lead in the church and other ministries to complete a process. I was so excited to hear that 50 candidates were interviewed for various roles of ministry. And in the end, 23 candidates were approved for ordination, 20 elders, two, three deacons and 18 for commissioning. And all of this will happen at our annual conference session this June. This is probably a record for this conference and certainly one of the few annual conferences that have such a large number of people to ordain and commission. And I'm so looking forward to my first ordination service here. After the 
meeting, I was thinking about this large number of candidates. I also think about what's happening right now in this United Methodist Church. Over this past year, as many of you know, that our conversation around human sexuality has stirred up deep division and divide throughout our United Methodist Church. Hundreds of United Methodist churches are disaffiliating from our denomination due to this division. I thought of these candidates and of their desire to serve God and God's church in these precarious times. Who would dare to do such a thing right now? So I visited with a few of the candidates and about their future in this church. And one was a young pastor serving not too far from here. And I asked him, I said, what is the greatest joy you have in being ordained and serving in the church? And he said, I'm able to be involved in, to lead in a part of people's spiritual journey of faith and to guide them to witness God's love and grace in their lives. And he added, I experienced the work of the Holy Spirit who leads my congregations to be open, to be united and to collaborate with one another as the body of Christ, even in the midst of conflicts. And I asked the second one, and he said, being a proof of ordination means that others see God working in me for such a time in the church to be set apart and to be seen as God's plan for redemptive work needed for the world causes me to shudder and pause in complete humility. And then he added, being affirmed with this vast diversity of a large group reminds me that each day God is doing a new thing and that God's handiwork of creation is all a part of the work of the kingdom of God and God's church. That, my friends, is what this group of ordinance will be doing. Rather than being worried about what will happen in the future, their trust is in God who leads them. They will work to proclaim the gospel to all. They will lead the local churches to serve their community and to be a faithful witness in ministry. They will be movers and shakers. They will be faithful to their calling through the relationship with Jesus Christ. And they will make disciples who like them will transform the world. And they will go and tell the world what God is doing through their lives and the ministries. My sisters and brothers, their call is our call. While they lead local churches and ministries as ordained pastors, God causes us to go and tell about it. We're called to go and tell the story of how God is changing the world, how God is working through our lives in this community and around the world. It is our call to share with all what this church is doing to transform lives around the world. It is an astonishing story that people need to pay attention to. I hope you'll join me today in the days ahead as we do our best to pay attention, to be astonished and to tell about it as we share that with the world. Mark 16, 15 gives us our final command. And he said to them, go into all the world, proclaim the gospel to the whole creation and all. Shall we pray? Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the witness of the generations, for people who find beauty in everything you do, for those who pay attention, for those who tell the story that remind us of our call and our duty to do the same. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's sermon. We'd love for you to join us again for live worship online or in person. To learn more about Church of the Resurrection, please visit core.org. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.